RVJ just put out another video that really makes some good points that a lot of the arm wrestling world needs to pay attention to. In summary, and this is my own interpretation, not exactly what he intended to be said, so don't quote me, but he seemed to be saying that this idea that people are getting about ultra-specific micro-movement and limited range of motion training in excess of more full joint range and overall general strength and well-being training will end up being detrimental to the health and well-being of the athletes involved. And very crucially for the message I have been trying to convey is that people really need to treat the way they train as more of a whole body athletic endeavour. It's an easy pick, but if we compare Ryan Bowen to Coach Ray, they each have quite distinct styles of training, and for Ray it has proved successful internationally over a long period of time, whereas for Ryan his success has been much more limited and the major athlete above him in Australia, that being Lachlan, although there may be more, but Lachlan seems to train more like Ray than Ryan. Ray has a much more whole body strengthening focus, which is, in my opinion, the result of his cultural environment, the athletes he trains alongside, and his own rational, more goal-focused and long-term success-oriented mindset. Just look at the gym where he and Yanis trains at, and also look at Sandra Shedis, who also lives and trains in Latvia. It's a former Soviet nation and retains all of the hallmarks of the Soviet science and data-driven training systems which produced the monsters of the last century. And now most of the modern monsters still train in the same places, with the same equipment and the same mindsets. Whereas Ryan, as I have covered many times now, seems to drill down on a new micro-movement every now and then. Convinced that this particular vector will prove to be the one which will unlock his ability to pin Levan. Now, of course, the term RVJ uses, athlete and athletic, is quite vague. Realistically, an athlete is not a specific type of strength or well-being. Ryan is as much an athlete as Ray or RVJ are, technically. But it's pretty obvious what he really means by athlete. He means a person who is more well-rounded and able in life and across multiple fields of sports, which almost all of the elite arm wrestlers I have seen coming from the East seem to be. In Russia, and I suspect many other Eastern Bloc countries, they even have the character of a sportsman, which in English typically just means someone who takes part in sports. But in Russia, a sportsman is much more of an able outdoorsman who is fit, healthy and proficient in many activities that they might encounter in the great outdoors. Physically, you can see a great difference between a person who has become ultra-specific to a sport and a person who is more general and well-rounded. In the sport of arm wrestling, as RVJ alluded to, you will see the shoulders rounded forwards and the chest tighten and collapse inwards because that is the position arm wrestlers spend so much time in on the table. But that does not mean that having that position by default leads to better performance in the sport. That position should be adopted voluntarily because the body has all of the supporting structure around it, like upper back and lats to hold and support that position strongly. But once the body adopts that position by default, all of the muscles involved are stretched and shortened into positions semi-permanently that mean they cannot function as they should do. A person who is chronically kyphotic and rounded forwards, like Ryan, is going to have a really hard time accessing true and fluent back pressure. They may still have a slither of mobility in bringing the elbow to the torso, but accessing any further movement from the upper back and lats after that is going to be incredibly challenging and likely very weak. And the chest and other muscles involved in things like side pressure are all going to be shrunk and shortened and incredibly tight, meaning they too will become shut off and not able to be accessed and used as they once were. Whereas a person who moves more freely and fluently around the shoulder joint is going to be able to drag that entire arm back using the entire chain of back pressure in harmony and will be able to move and vary the way they apply it and their side pressure too. I think Ryan and Ray make a great example of this. 
Ryan, who may be very strong on his pulleys in specific angles and positions when confronted with the mobile and adaptable coach Ray, found himself immediately outmaneuvered and in positions he could not contest against, just the same as happened to him against Lachlan. Which is just as RVJ described, having no ability when you are pulled out of your narrow positions of strength. Which, again, is just as the Soviet weightlifters trained in the 60s, 70s and 80s, to strengthen all areas of weakness in case the bar ended up outside of the optimal path of strength. And in more modern fields, this is just how Westside Barbell trained, with the late Louis Simmons being inspired directly from the aforementioned teachings and studies of the Soviet schools. A chain is only as strong as its weakest link, and all of the best and most well-rounded athletes understand this. Most of the best arm wrestlers in the world come from environments which require them to be active outside of just practicing on the table. A large majority come from Eastern Europe and Russia, where outdoor life and manual labor, even if done just for the benefit of the home life, makes up a much bigger part of the lifestyle than it does in a lot of the West especially in America, where many people interested in arm wrestling also work 9-to-5 jobs where they may not be at all mobile or athletic. And this is not limited to just this sport, it also holds true for American hobby powerlifters, weightlifters, or any other type of sport that has become trendy recently. You can see the push to become more healthy and active because that is what the marketers want those people to feel is a better life for them, with things like the outdoors, returning to tradition, primal living, etc, etc. Which it may be, depending on your definition of better, but the main thing those marketers seem to miss out on is that someone who has spent their lives up to that point of changing interest with a sedentary lifestyle, suddenly deciding to become a professional athlete and starting immediately to train in the way a Bulgarian arm wrestler does, is going to end up with tremendous stress and strain on the body, and probably end up quitting from injuries. This is not to say that you cannot train like a professional athlete might, but you have to be a lot more intelligent and rational about how you approach it. It takes a long time to make real foundational changes to the body. Even anabolic steroids, which work relatively quickly, make mostly superficial changes which disappear quite quickly without them. And so you need that period of transition, of slowly titrating in elements of the lifestyle you want to live, otherwise you'll be physically overwhelmed. Yes, as you become more advanced in a sport, the need for specificity increases as you need to find more and more ways to improve on what you have already improved upon. But even the most elite athletes will have regular off-seasons where that need for specificity dissipates and the need for recovery and resetting takes priority. If RVJ had an upcoming match with a tough opponent, it would certainly benefit him to train more seriously and with more focused intent. But if he is just coasting and enjoying himself, he can and really should train in as wide a way as possible, and he knows this fully well. Elite level sport is not healthy, whether that be through stress from training, physiological or pharmaceutical changes to the body, diet, wear and tear, serious injuries, etc. And you, even if you are the Levan of tomorrow, should spend as little time as necessary in that dangerous, most specific and highest stress mode. How many serious matches have we seen Levan or Devon take part in since they met in July? But that's it for today. A bit of a ramble after I saw RVJ's video. If you want more content, check out the Patreon where I post training routines in the style that we talked about today. And join the Discord server for discussions on all sorts of topics, otherwise I'll see you next time. <laughs>